Coming up, SpaceX tests their upper stage engine for six full minutes. Virgin Galactic also tests their White Knight 2 and the Human Mars experiment. All that and a whole lot more on this April 3rd edition of Space Vidcast Live. I, I think we're sitting. Welcome to Space Vidcast Live. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and incredibly talented Carrie Ann Higginbotham. She is my astro wife. We are the Space Vidcasters. I remembered it third time in a row. Yeah, and you didn't call me Tubby, so we didn't and have I to didn't, get smacked on air. I, exactly. We'd like to welcome back the crew of STS-119 with this fantastic video that Max Q made us. Roll it. You are clear to launch the discovery. Got to clear to launch. Thank you. We have lost more people than we know. Like a rock that falls into a pool, it leaves the rain that grows. What kind of legacy will I leave behind? That leads to peace. Yeah. 
Thank you to Max Q for making that uh, neat little STS-119 music video for us, recapping it. I mean, I could have told you what was happening, but why do that when you can do it all to music? Well, there wasn't nearly enough hatching going on. <laughs> Checking the or hatch. Or the urine. <laughs> I mean, I, there really needs to be more urine. Uh, well, you know, we will, know. Make, we will make caution urine stickers and sell them on Space we Vidcast. Ha we have to it, now. At this point, it's required. It's, it's a Space Vidcast and thing. And the hatch is a hatch sticker, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, that was an oddly appropriate song that Max Q chose, the uh, love is uh, uh, open arms and all mm -hmm. that fun jazz, because they're having a little bit of a spat on the International Space Station Well, right no, no, now. they're not having a spat on the International Space Station. Well, that's people true, that's on true. the ground are having a spat about what the people on the ISS should be doing. Right, and the people on the ISS are like, no. <laughs> yeah, all the astronauts and cosmonauts are like, let me think about this. There's six of us here. I think we're going to get along. So what happen what's happening is, uh, I believe it's Russia and the United States. And yeah, mostly. we have actually slightly conflicting reports as to who started it. Right. I've, read I've actually read it both ways, but I'm going to blame Russia because I'm in the U.S. So uh, I'm just, you know. <laughs> okay, well, then you can blame the U.S. I I'll blame the U.S. Fine, I'm going to blame Russia. The story I heard is that basically Russia has said that uh, they want to charge because they charge for tourists to go up to the space station, they want to charge for all of their stuff, and as such, they want to charge the U.S. for use of their parts of the module, such as the bathroom, their food, and other critical core components on the International Space Station. So we're kind of in a turf war right now because the U.S. is like, well, fine, and you can't use our stuff. And so Russia's like, fine, you can't use our stuff. So, you know, you got to, it, it's absurd because... I mean, it's getting down to, like, the toilets. Yeah, like exactly. The Russian, the cosmonauts apparently can't use the astronauts' exercise bike. They uh, they used to all eat together and sort of like swap stuff and you know because I'm sure so there's always so many pot they've roasts. They've got a line eat. on the ground that's like oh, you can't cross over my line. It's just I mean come on that's yeah. really a ridiculous. As you, as, you know, as you guys are saying in the chat room, you got to be kidding me. Grow up, children, absolutely. We, right. We obviously we agree. And that's the thing. And actually, so do the astronauts and cosmonauts uh, because yes, they're basically the like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, let me fly an entire football field away yep. so I can use the bathroom way over there instead. Exactly. Uh, they, they've made it pretty apparent that they share everything. Basically, they have to. Um, the only personal space they get are their living quarters, which my understanding is quite small. Like you know, It's like their this. sleeping bag and yeah, wherever yep. their arms can touch. That's really only the personal space they have, and everything else is a shared space. Uh, a shared area and you know in the spirit of cooperation which is kind of how the international space station was you know the whole thing is built we didn't around mess that. that all up guys uh, you know they're they're <laughs> you know it really it would it would kill the camaraderie on the space station can yeah. you imagine having to go through that it'd be re that's just ridiculous. but the astronauts and cosmonauts are doing great so shame on us and russia for even bringing this up and just stop it guys just forget the politics and do whatever hey we've got we've done sts 119 we've done two weeks of nothing but nasa mm -hmm. and you know what you guys want you guys want privatized space travel. That's what you guys want. Yeah. Except for the people from NASA in the chat room. They want more NASA. But, you right. Know, no, they but want private space travel, too, actually. Right. They like to right. see what's because going on. Because I'm sure, you know, Blair hasn't heard enough about it. So <laughs> there you go. After the break, we've got SpaceX testing their second stage engine for their Falcon 9 rocket. That rocket? Rockin'. It is rockin', <laughs> rockin as a matter rockin', of fact. Yeah. <laughs> we've got them testing their, their rocket, and that went remarkably well. We've got some footage of that. We've also got Virgin Galactic test flying... Really? It's going to be one of those, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> Virgin Galactic test flying White Knight 2, which is going to open the door for privatized space for you and I to go into space, suborbital flight. Let's just go to break. Forget it at this point. Roll the break. Roll the break. I'm done.
Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks! We got Mission Madness in there, and, and I just want to point out really quickly. I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is called uh, Mars Madness. It's a little play on words, of course. I wore it because the Mission Madness is kind of coming to an end a little bit here. But they all are like little Mars aliens, and this one's an astronaut. This little American astronaut, and just like the bracket. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's why I wore this shirt. You know, um, cork spin. Cork spin. Was it cork spin? Yeah. What about them? Pork spin. The toaster. The toaster. The fracking toaster, <laughs> as we like to lovingly refer to him as, sent the Google Lunar X Prize Foundation a couple of. Uh, Not a couple, like a big box. old box. A like box a of big, moon big old box of moon pies. And I, you know, being a good northern boy, I had no idea what a moon pie even was. <laughs> I had never heard of these fabled things. I'm like, are they like pies you eat on the moon? I have no idea. And <laughs> They're they, made of cheese. And uh, Pomerantz and. Uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike, GLXP. Decided to have an eating contest with these. Right, well, because they had already had an eating contest when they went to Google. Yep. And Will won that one. Mm -hmm. So Mike was really kind of just looking for any sort of excuse yep. to kind of, you know, mm -hmm. go up against him. And then Moon Pies. And so here we are, Space Dude Cast. We're all about competition and contests and, you know, beating other people. You know, we're going to beat Blair and Chris to the moon. Uh, we're going to beat... No, Blair you know, and I are going to beat Ben and Chris to the moon. Whatever. <laughs> however you want to work that. Uh, so I, I, I confronted Quartz Spin. I'm like, how dare you? you? You didn't give us any moon. We had no chance. We have no chance to win it. And I said, it, maybe that's because you called him a fracking toaster. Fracking toaster. So then we show up at the studio tonight. And keep in mind... I, I, we haven't the been in the studio in two weeks. We haven't been here for a while. So we come to the studio and there's a box waiting for us. Do you want to open the... Uh, I yeah, have a, okay. It happens to be from Corkspin. Now, we have not opened this box yet. We figured we'd open it on air in front of you guys. Uh, you want to open it or shall I? Uh, you do it. You're so afraid you're going to cut yourself? Yeah, I am very afraid I'm going to cut myself. Yeah, always cut away well, from your body. Yeah, as you do yep. not that. Okay. Exactly. The best part is that caffeinated Adam, uh, our director, was like, hey, you know... You guys got a box. And it I said, oh, you know, I saw a box, but oh, I, I, I mean, didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. It is ticking. It's not ticking yet. Aw, thanks. It's the little. address <laughs> thing that we don't need Ooh. at all. Um, how come I didn't get one of these? More important? It just says Ben. Post, more important? I'm opening it. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what and we got. And that's Moon Pies. We've got Moon Pies. So for those of you watching live, Wait till after the show. I think Carrie and I, Carrie Ann and I, are going to have to have a moon pie eating contest to see which one of us wins this. And then the champion of our contest. Too bad we don't have any contest, RC Cola, though. Champion of our contest is going to have to move on to. We'll use. We'll substitute it with Coke. Yes. We'll move on to. Uh, um, Thank you. Court compete spin. against the X Prize Foundation. Yes. So thank hopefully you very much, we're all going to be at the ISDC uh, come May. And we so have no idea. We'll do a little GLXP SVC off. 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 Oh, NASA Edge, if you guys are there, <laughs> I challenge you, NASA Edge, to yes! a moon pie we can eating have an contest. Edge SVC. X Prize. GLXP. X, exactly. <laughs> Jeez, so many acronyms. I know. You'd think it's space travel or rocket scientist or something. I know. What's with all the TLAs? <laughs> oh. All right. The first. Oh. The first Blair says, our, game on. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. I think it's time to start. I was going to say first on our space news, but we haven't done our little open thing. All right. I think it's time to. You ready with that? Or do we need to stall? I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to make them we run need space, space news, news open. 
Oh, yeah. Space News Open. You ready for this? I am. Here it comes. Any moment now. Space News. That's what happens on internet television. <laughs> I love Boris. Thank you, Boris, <laughs> so much for that. I just, I can't even tell you. You love it. You know you do. Yeah. All of you, you all love it. First up in space news, SpaceX has tested their upper <laughs> you just stage. can't do it. It, it, it. It's something tonight. There's something in the air. I guess. SpaceX has tested their upper stage engine, which is in use, going to be in use for with their Falcon 9. And the reason this is important is this is what's going to help get humans to the International Space Station as well as cargo and anything else. Mm -hmm. And they actually did a phenomenally great job with this. Uh, they had to run a six minute test of the upper stage engine and they actually have a full six minute video of the That's rocket fire. fire. A, absolutely. And actually we've got a clip of that. It's called SpaceX. Check this out. Six minutes of this. Well, not this. No, nope, right but here. It'll be yeah, this yeah. in a second. This. Uh huh. Six minutes. Uh -huh. It's now, been ten seconds. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be used. This is the engine that is used in the vacuum of space. Basically, they do stage separation, where they take the the engines that are used on Earth, they separate away from the vehicle, and then they fire this particular engine. Now, this engine needs to be able to run at different uh, velocities, different speeds, different power ratings, and it needs to be able to run for about six minutes. And so this was a test that allowed it to run for the full six minutes. And actually, you can see it does a perfect cutoff exactly on time. And the reason the Falcon 9 and the SpaceX is kind of the darling child of the space industry so far is that they can do space travel for a fraction of the price, a fraction of the price that the traditional guys can do it for. And this is going to be it's absolutely be awesome because this is we're, we're getting ready to see the first historic flight of Falcon 9. They've already launched Falcon 1, which is their one engine rocket. This is their nine engine rocket. Which is the big one. Yep. Now, this, uh, the thrust for this engine was measured at approximately 92,500 pounds of force in vacuum conditions. And it remained thermally stable the entire time. And when you think about how much heat's going to be generated by this thing, that's, uh, that's absolutely awesome and incredible. This is based on the Merlin 1C engine, and it's basically the same engine that boosted the Falcon 1 into orbit a little bit earlier as uh, last year, actually. Falcon 1 Flight 4 is specifically the one we'd like to, we'd like to highlight because Flight 3 didn't go so well. <laughs> right, we'll just skip right <laughs> over 3. We'll just pretend like Flight 3 Ooh, never dee dee happened. Dee dee da da da. So yeah, actually what we'll do is at the end of Space Vidcast, after the credits, we're going to roll for your viewing pleasure, because I know you guys, the, the true space nerds out there, hang on, most people don't care, right? Because you're going to see about pretty much everything that you just saw right there, and you're going to be like, yeah, that was great. Six minutes of that. But for the true hardcore space geeks out there, we're going to let you see the full si six minutes. So stay tuned after our credit roll, and you can see six minutes of nothing but that. And you it can just sounds like the worst static ever. It well, I yeah. mean, it's pretty. But yeah, like. But imagine being done. on board, being on the Dragon module. Yeah, no, I mean it would be awesome. Don't get me wrong. I, I just, just six minutes. It's. Oh. It's a lot. It's a lot. That's it's why we're doing lot. it after the credit roll. Yay. But it, it's very important. It's very, very important, especially for the new space community and mm -hmm. for the space 2.0 stuff, uh, because SpaceX is really kind of pushing the pushing the envelope with mm -hmm. this stuff. It was it was a tremendously great run for them. It was I don't want to say flawless, but from everything that I'm reading, all the press releases where they tell me how flawless, flawless it was, <laughs> it was pretty flawless. And it, that's Because they would never lie in a press no. release. Uh, so it's exciting because now we can actually start to see the cost. You know, it's $500 million mm -hmm. to launch a space shuttle mission. Half a billion dollars for every single launch. These guys are going to knock that cost down to I think you can launch a... Uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe the price of launching a Falcon 1 is around $7 million. So we're going from, obviously, you know, different things here, right? The Falcon 1 can't lift as much but cargo. Still it's like different 10%. vehicles. But yeah, it's a fraction of the price. And so, you know, the Falcon 9 is going to be, you know, quite a bit less money, too. And it's, it's just, it's going to be cool. I'm excited for that. I'm, I love SpaceX. I, I want to see I what know, they're going to do. And, I know. Well, like I said, 2009 is the foundation year. And speaking of foundation year, moving on to our next space news item. White Knight 2 did its first test run. Now, White Knight 2 is one of two parts for the next generation spacecraft from Virgin Galactic. For those who don't know, Virgin Galactic is the space company that will allow you, mere mortals, not just astronauts, anyone on the face of the planet, to fly into suborbital space, not at the mind-blowingly seven, what is it, 
37 million dollars right. that it cost her to go to the ISS now, but at the staggeringly high $200,000. Yeah, still expensive, <sighs> but you know, at least it's coming down. You know, thirty-seven million one year, two hundred thousand dollars the next year, hundred thousand the next year, fifty thousand. Right, right. So it's I coming mean, down in price. That's livable. There are two parts to the Virgin Galactic spaceship. There's White Knight Two, which mm -hmm. is kind of the airplane that gets the rocket off the ground. I I don't know if you consider that the is it the first stage rocket? Is it the because no, there's no it's rocket, a, it's a but it's space, like the first stage. It's the space plane. Yeah, but it's you know it's the the it's getting the rocket up to it, the first stage. How would you guys what what do you guys in the chat room want to call that? Is it the first stage rocket? The first stage plane? Is it? Uh, I have no idea what that would be called. But yeah, anyway. Anyhow, yeah. So th that's what gets it up into I believe it's like fifty or sixty thousand feet, and then from there they drop. <laughs> how much fun would this be? They drop the middle section, which is the rocket. They g let go of it. And then they light, light the rocket off, and you actually go into space from there. And that's Spaceship Two. And that actually hasn't, they haven't completed Spaceship Two. Right. But we've got a, a quick video showing you the first test flights of White Knight Two. Check it out. This is a fabulous airplane. It really is. I think the feeling of uh, everybody here today is just uh, uh, pure enthusiasm. As Bert said, this really is a fantastic aircraft. We've got around four and just over four hours of flying under our belts now, and it really has performed flawlessly. And this is a unique aircraft. We've already flown it above 18,000 feet, but it's eventually going to be capable of going to 50,000. It'll be capable of carrying a payload of 17 tons and being an astronaut training vehicle. So the White Knight 2 really is the future of aviation. But more importantly, as it's not really technically an aircraft, it's actually a launch vehicle for space. It is the first ever first stage to launch that doesn't really require ground-based rocketry. It's designed for the purposes of getting a vehicle into space or getting an unmanned vehicle into space that could launch a satellite. An exciting prospect. The approach to landing, we did a low approach and that uh, was just spectacular. I actually got a glimpse of everybody on the side of the runway, everybody cheering. It was a great feeling. It's going to be a year of firsts. White Knight 2 will not only this year prove its enormous flying capabilities of both being a zero-G plane where you could experience zero gravity and an astronaut training vehicle where you could experience G-forces, but it will clearly also get some very excited people flying in it. And it is such a unique vehicle that it's 100% carbon composite construction and its ability to carry 17 tonnes and its ability to carry all the astronauts to train them for the next day's flight or indeed carry NASA astronauts. I think it will probably be one of the most exciting flights that Richard's ever done and he's done a lot of very exciting flying in his life. So that's pretty much epic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is the, this is the foundation year. This is when it's all changing. 2010, we're all going to be able to go to space. It's very cool. It's going to cost you as much as it costs to buy a house, but still, at least you can go to space. I mean, come on. At least you can go there, right? It's going to be, it's, it's this epic. This is true. This and is true. I, I am a, I'm a huge fan of these these companies, and I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do. But it's not just Virgin Galactic and SpaceX. It's mm -hmm. also Armadillo Aerospace. Yes. It's x -Corp someday. I mean, there, there are a bunch of up-and-coming stars in the new space arena, and I really do, I really believe that we're going to make it back to the moon, and we're going to be able to set up lunar colonies and lunar hotels for actual people, not astronauts, but actual people outside of the government, mm -hmm. and it's going to be, for, you're just watching the beginning of a whole new future, a whole new industry be built right before our very eyes, and it's, it's 
really cool to watch. Really, really cool. Which is uh, it kind of segues me ways into the Space Renaissance Foundation a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to touch on this for a moment, but it's an inter ch check out spacerenaissance.org, I believe it is. I think so. Um, and what it is is just an organization that kind of talks about this. Our economy is depressed. We need to do something new. And uh, this is something we've mentioned a little bit on the show before. And you don't necessarily have to agree with me or disagree with me, but it's definitely something that is worth, I think, a little bit of research. And that is the idea that rather than throw money into the old industrial system, mm -hmm. let's start throwing it into next generation stuff. Space-based solar power, mining H3 from the moon, mm -hmm. you know, building these uh, new industries around space travel because mm -hmm. there will this will be a multi-trillion dollar industry very soon. It's already a multi-billion dollar industry. M billions and billions and billions of dollars. NASA alone is $20 billion. So uh, this is going to be really cool stuff, and you can actually see what the Space Renaissance it's foundation, I think it is, is doing on sp at spacerenaissance.org, and we were going to try to get some video clips of that. If we can, it, they had a, a press release. If we can get those video clips, we certainly will get those and post those on our YouTube channel. Uh, so that's uh, that's what I want to talk about there. And uh, you have uh, the human Mars experiment because we go to the moon mm -hmm. and we build this new industry, mm -hmm. and then we want to go on to Mars. Mm -hmm. But there's a little bit of a problem. Yeah, well, you're going to be stuck in a, I don't know, 1,200 square foot capsule for months on end. And yeah. when you're going from here to Mars, it's just blackness for the most part. I mean, once you pretty stars. Yeah, well, but once you get past Earth and the moon. In the Enterprise. In the Enterprise, there's not a whole lot else to look at. And uh, so... They, what happened was that, well, what happened, what is happening, I can talk too, apparently, the, uh, I believe it's the ESA, set up for five, six guys to go into a 1,200 foot, square foot capsule. Mm -hmm. They are literally padlocked in, so they can't get out. There's no windows. One of those master padlocks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like exactly. I had on my locker at school. Exactly, yep. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Um, and they're locked in for 105 days, 105 days. And the whole thing is a big experiment looking at the f sort of effects of looking at the exact same five other faces for 105 days. The problem is 105 days isn't long enough. No, it's not. But they don't want anyone to go crazy you know, stir crazy or killing rampage. But isn't that the whole point anything. of this experiment? I mean, it's yeah, going to take a better part of a year to just to get to Mars. Okay, but we did not suddenly send uh, Gemini or Friendship 7 to the moon, right? We went up into space, and then we went around, and then we did a nice little spacewalk, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So this is that sort of step, because once this is done, mm -hmm. and assuming nobody dies, <laughs> from going crazy, right. uh, then they're going to start a 520 uh, day one, like so basically right after it. Yep. Yeah. Would that be the equivalent of a round trip? Right. That's supposed to be the equivalent of around going out to Mars, going around for 30 days. I guess landing. They're going to practice that landing. Okay. Yep. Um, We've not been very good and successful in landing our Martian rovers. I believe we have a 50% failure rate or 50% success rate. Well, Whichever way you want to look at that. Right, but so we let's have hope we can with do the better with the humans on stuff. board. <laughs> the balloons. And so I it just kind of bounces no, all over the place. No, no, I don't think I want to drop it hundreds of miles per hour in the giant balloon thing that bounces upside down. The when rovers you get the are okay. Yes, but they're hot. Okay, they're well, anyway, hot. and then come back to Earth. That's what the 520 days is supposed to simulate. Um, but they are not allowed outside unless they are leaving the experiment forever, yep. uh, which pretty much you have to treat it as, you know, Johnny died. <laughs> Got right? shot into space. Uh, they're allowed music and books and DVDs and stuff like that. Uh, but they will be doing experiments and they will be doing um, sort of uh, communication experiments. So are they going to slowly delay the amount of time that it takes to communicate back with the outside world? Until yeah, you, that's my understanding. Until they get to like a seven minute delay? Oh, no. My understanding is that they are giving a 20 minute delay. Oh my gosh. For talking to, talking to home, talking to mission control, all of that stuff. I thought it was a seven minute, because it's speed of light, so I thought it was a seven minute if delay. If they just would have the atoms, yeah, yeah, that's then it right. would be instantaneous. Pasho. View our archives. <laughs> you can see how we can communicate with Mars in real time, splitting an atom. Uh, you know, somebody in the chat room is asking cards, poker. You know, possibly they're allowed a couple of personal items. Uh, someone else is asking about sex. Well, it's six guys, so Ooh. I. Oh, visualized it. Oh, not good. Not I'm just good. saying. You know. Ugh. It happens, I suppose. Uh, they will be monitored 24-7 to make sure, again, that there isn't a rampage. They don't want to open the door after 105 days and go, 
Oh. They devolve. <laughs> right, soup. <laughs> There's not that kind of thing going on. But they are, you know, making sure that everyone's okay. There is a doctor on board that's one of the guys. Um, it, these people are actually volunteers. And but they're getting paid. They are getting paid, yeah. but it's six guys out of 6,000 some odd volunteers from like 40 different countries or something like that volunteered for this. Hmm. Why? I mean, the money's not that good. It's like 6,000 a month. But it's not, I mean, that's, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I would, the 105 thing I think would be okay. It's the 520. Well, I don't know. I'd be willing to test it, but only if it was with tomorrow's Mars and we were actually going to Mars. You're right, I suppose. Yes. I don't want to just test it. I want to go. Yeah, so for those of you looking for information on that, <laughs> that's a, a, a oldie-timey guest of Space Vidcast. Go to liveonmars.org, and you can learn about his plans to actually send humans to Mars. And this is outside of a government agency. So he's, yes. he's serious about this, too. He is. Set up a lunar colony on the moon. I, you know, I don't think many people realize how close we are to actually putting humans back on the moon and onto Mars w with NASA and without NASA as yes. well. I mean, NASA's got their constellation program, and I think that'll move forward. And I, there are, I know there are people in Space Vidcast who disagree with me, but I think there's too many politics, so I think it will move forward. It, well, no, disagreeing's okay. No, no, no. I, 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 who knows? They could be right. They could absolutely be right. I don't know. We, only the time will tell. Um, but then there's also the private sector, and I'm excited to see what the private sector is going to do there. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's that any more on that um no i mean uh, they're not allowed outside the experiments windowless blah 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 that's pretty much there it there you go i'd like to thank everyone for watching live remember after the live show we're going to be eating our moon pies moon pie contest excited for that thank you quartz spin cracking toaster <laughs> for uh hooking us up with some moon pies so we'll see which one of us is the better man hmm. i have a bigger mouth that is true that is very true you have to, is it sw all the way down? Is that the thing? Or is it just in your mouth? Well, otherwise we'd be shoving marshmallows in our mouth. That's yes, true. you have to swallow. That's true. Check us out. We stream live every <laughs> week. That's Friday at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those of you in the United States, because I know that you can't do time zone conversions, that's Thursday nights at 7 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Central, or 10 o'clock Eastern. Dude, they can't. Seriously. They have to have it all spelled You're out. You're so for mean. All right. Come on. Seriously, how many people in the U.S. can tell me what time we'll say 10 o'clock a.m. coordinated universal time is on a Friday? Anyhow. For their local time. That's not the point. Exactly. That's what I thought. <laughs> exactly what I thought. Uh, and one final f comment is that uh, we are hosted by Crow River Coffee Company. They make make sure that everything runs smoothly. They send us the studio space. They he, they're they're just great people. And, they send uh, us the studio they space. They send us they send it to us every week. They send us a, stu a new studio. It's amazing how they do that. Rocket science. It's, it's just rocket science. That's how it works. And uh, so every every month we have a coffee of the month. And because we had STS one nineteen, we're kind of extending last month's coffee into this month. And this month's coffee of the month is the N Nicaraguan Segovia. Segovia. Yep. That guy right there. Ah. So definitely go to CrowRiverCoffee.com, check it out, order it, and if you order the coffee of the month, you can get one of the fabled Space Vidcast stickers. It is the only way to get an official Space Vidcast sticker, one of these. Now, you can get some of the unofficial kind going to our store on the Space Vidcast site, but you can't get the cool kind that you can put on your car or your computer. The only way to get that sticker is by buying some coffee. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.